Good morning, dear friends, and uh, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. After a few days, and I praise God for this opportunity once again we have to be quiet for a few minutes on this second uh, on this on this day um, before we begin our uh, activities of the day and uh, it is good to give a uh, time for God uh, silently to listen to his voice and his voice come through his word and so let us listen carefully today's meditation is taken from first John the letter of John in his first letter chapter 4 verses 7 to 10 and uh, let me read this this uh, passage for you the title of this meditation will be god's wonderful love gift and so first john chapter 4 reading from verse 7 it says here dear friends let us love one another for love comes from god Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. This is the passage. And let us look into this passage for a few minutes only. You know, the greatest proof of love is found in giving, giving to the one you love. A young man beginning to love the girl of his dream. First he brings in candy and then flowers and then a ring. This is first love. And if you uh, if you examine this first love, how it works, this process, you will know what Jesus really meant when he wrote that letter to the church at Ephesus where, where he is complaining that that church has left the first love. This is the love. And um, a loving wife nurses a sick husband day and night. Why? Because she loves him. And she counts all the sacrifices as nothing. Because of love. A mother brings a child into the world. She cares for him. And she watches over him. And she sends him to school. And then silently she weeps. Because she loves him. And you consider how a mother makes so many sacrifices in bringing up a child and making him a man or a woman worth. She counts all the sacrifices as nothing because of love. And let me tell you who is the greatest lover. God is the greatest lover. He showed and proved his love by giving us the gospel according to St. John chapter 3 verse 16. Where we read his love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting love. And when you consider 
who and what we were when God loved us, you will realize the greatness, the amazing, unbelievable greatness of God's love. God the Father's love is the greatest love and He is the greatest lover. And He showed and proved His love by giving us His only begotten Son. You know, a gift ever given by anyone or any among us human beings who are not only unworthy and undeserving. That means God has given us the greatest love ever seen and ever the world will know again. And why is it so great? Because God showed his love to a humanity which was unworthy and undeserving of a such love from a, such a God. In his love, he has given us several gifts. And so this meditation is all about the love gift God has given us because of his love. And the greatest of all gifts is his own son, Jesus Christ. He also gave us the gift of Holy Spirit. Then he gave us a family where we can grow and become worth. And what is that family? The church. And while earthly relationship will come to an end with this life here, this relationship of brothers and sisters in the church will not end here. It will continue through eternity. And that's why we need to value the church and its fellowship and the brothers and sisters and boys and girls in the church. They are very, very precious because they are precious to God. Then he gave us his printed word. And what is that? The Bible. See, my friends, Jesus Christ is the living word and the Bible in our hands is the written word. <clears throat> and this morning, we shall talk about this particular gift, the Bible. The Bible is no ordinary book. Holy men of God were moved by the Holy Spirit and spoke by the power and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we read in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. They were prepared this uh, love letter from God to man that we may possess that love letter and be loved by God. People and powers motivated by evil try to destroy this letter. And you think about it. This letter from God to man. By God has protected and preserved. They did to the Bible almost everything they did to Christianity or to the Christian. Along with Christians, the Bible also has been persecuted. In other words, it has been burned at the stake, thrown to the four winds, locked away from the people. Still the Bible lives. 
because its author and protector is none other than this great lover of souls, the Lord God Almighty himself. Critics say it is simply a human book full of errors and myths. They say the story of Israelites crossing the Red Sea, the story of Noah, the miracles of Jesus are all folklore. They say hell is man's imagination. It is not real. And these men appear on the uh, stages of action, have their little days and then passion, pass on. They are found on scene only for a short while. And I want to now begin to talk about uh, the reasons why God gave us the Bible. And before I start that, let me remind you once again. You know, all these miracles and all these, uh, 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 their, their criticism of the Bible that their, the, the hell is an imagination of people and uh, all this kind of, but look what this Bible has done. Not only God protected and preserved miraculously, no human could do it. How he protected his love letter to mankind. And look what that letter is doing today. It's bringing hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of men and women, young people and boys and girls to a loving relationship God the Father who by his Holy Spirit changes them in their life and uh, set them free from the demon powers and evil forces so that they may free the, uh, they, they may enjoy that freedom and live. And now let us consider why the reason. There are mainly four reasons why God has given us this love gift, the Bible. Number one, to tell us of himself. God wanted the world, a God-forgotten and God-forsaking world to know who he truly is. And men are crying out like Philip, show us the Father and that suffices us. There is a cry within the heart of men and women today. We want to know God. We want to know a living, true God. If there is a God. Show us the Father. That is the cry. The Bible tells us uh, all we can know of God. If we show boldness to address God as our Father, why is it? It is because he is not a stranger to us. He knows every one of us, including our name. As we read God's word, the Holy Spirit reveals to us this God and teaches us all we need to know of him. That's why the Bible is given to us. Number one reason that all of us may know this loving, eternal, living God. In the book of Jeremiah, I want to read this passage. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Here it says, This is what the Lord says, Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. 
But let him who boast, boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. This is the Lord God Almighty. My friends, let us not boast of anything else because they, whatever you have and whatever you may possess is all just for a short while. They are not eternal. It will not be with you all the time and you will not be here to enjoy them all the time either. But there is a God waiting for you. There is an eternity waiting for you and enter into there. And for that, you need to know who and what this God is. May the Lord bless you, my brother and sister. If you know him and walking with him, wonderful. I praise God for you. And I also pray that if you are such a person, a follower of Jesus Christ, then it is your duty now to take this wonderful revelation given to us by God's word of this true living God to take him and present him to the people who do not know you. They are on their way to eternal destruction into hell. But you can have your part in rescuing them and bringing them to the knowledge of this one true almighty God. And give them a Bible. God bless you as you serve him and worship him. Amen. This is a wonderful day for you to live. Live and enjoy serving God. Amen.